This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in. We got a sweet spot for you. And uh, I tell you, every time you feed on the Word, something changes on the inside. Something is elevated. Something is imparted to us. And so we're so thankful for this time of getting to spend with you around the Word. We've, been ta we've, we've started teaching on something that's so important for us to learn in connection to healing, how to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> how uh, to hold fast yes. to what you've received because the enemy has strategies right. to, that he endeavors to work against us to try to rob from us. The Word tells us Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. But Jesus said, but I've come that you yes. might have life and have it more abundantly. Anything that steals, kills, and destroys, God had nothing to do with. That's right. Had nothing to do with. And so um, we, want to, we want to be skillful at not just receiving from God, but also holding fast to what we receive. Um, no matter what method whereby you received healing. Maybe someone laid hands on you. Maybe someone agreed with you in prayer. Maybe you just exercised your faith. Maybe a, a gift of the Spirit. Uh, no matter what method you used, the enemy will always try to steal from you everything God's blessed you with. So we have to make sure that we're doing our part um, to occupy the victory that is ours. We don't have to win the victory. Jesus won it, but we do have to occupy it. Yes. Meaning we have to also keep off of our victory ground things that try to insert itself. Yes. Symptoms and pain is nothing but the temptation to be sick. Yes. And it's trying to, if I could say this, it's trying to rob from us right. the health that is already ours. Yes. We are not the sick trying to get healed. Amen. This is not what this broadcast is ever about. We're not trying to get healed. That's who we are. Amen. That's who we are. We are the healed. And we are refusing to allow sickness, disease, symptoms, pain to rob our health from us. That's our position. We are resisting the devil. We're resisting symptoms. We're resisting pains. Amen. Uh, we made this statement in the previous episodes that the devil will launch a counterattack of old pains, yes. old symptoms, yes. trying to come back. He tries to deceive you with feelings. Right. Um, I love something my, my son was preaching recently, and he said, healing is not a feeling. Yes. Healing is who we are. Healing is... Our, our position in Christ, we are the healed. It is a property, a commodity, yes. a divine commodity that belongs to us, purchased for us Amen. by the blood of Jesus. And we are not allowing it to be stolen from us. Amen. So we have to always approach every opposition, every challenge the devil poses against us with the mindset this is already defeated. Yes. I'm not doing this to defeat it. Yes. It's already defeated. In every encounter with the devil, we're always to approach it with the, with the mindset and the understanding, this is a defeated foe. Yes. I am here enforcing that defeat. I'm not here trying to win something. I am here enforcing the, their defeat and our victory. Yes. Amen. Amen. The enemy launches a counterattack, though, because he wants to deceive people through their feelings, yes. through their symptoms. Yes. He wants their symptoms to counsel them, yes. their body to counsel them and tell them you're sick. Yes. You're, you're getting worse. Yes. Your body is not your counselor. The Holy Ghost in you is the divine counselor. Yes. 
And the word of God is the wisdom. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't take counsel from your body. Right. Um, take counsel from the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's right. Now, don't misunderstand me. There have been times that the Holy Ghost has counseled me to go on medicine. Yes, he has. But when he did, he also gave me God's prescription. Yes. And God's, and he said, be feeding your faith. This was years ago, uh, 35 years ago or so. He said, go on the medication, but every day keep feeding your faith. Yes. And he said, and when you, when your faith is where it should be, I'll tell you when to come off the medication. Yes. See, you take your counsel from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't take it just from your body. Don't take it from the devil. Don't yes. take it from circumstances. Yes. And so your pain would like to try to counsel you into unbelief. It, it, symptoms would like to try to counsel you into fear. So don't take your counsel from them. So the devil launches a counterattack, uh, endeavoring to bring back old feelings, old pains, to try to make you think your fate doesn't work for you, to try to make you think your authority isn't effective for you, but it is. Amen. Stand your ground. Hold your ground. Uh, the Word of God um, instructs us what to do to hold fast, yes. to yes. maintain that healing yes. that we have received. Uh, we started on the previous episode, and we're, we've got to go back there because we want to go further with it. But looking at Luke chapter 5, verse 15, it reads, But so much the more went there a fame abroad of Him, speaking of Jesus. Look at this. And great multitudes came together. Mm -hmm. And we were saying this, Always go to the location where you can keep hearing the word. Yes. That's what these multitudes did. They didn't just sit at home and wait for Jesus to show up at their door because he wanted to heal them. He wanted to heal them, but they had a responsibility to get where he, they could hear. So great multitudes came together, look at this, to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So notice this, they didn't just come to be healed. They came to hear and be healed. Yes. What's this mean? They came to learn something. Yeah. They right. came to hear right thinking. Mm -hmm. right. They came to gain knowledge of the word Amen. that was being preached because their healing was in their hearing of that word. Yeah. So um, when they heard, when they heard the word preach, faith came. Yes. And that faith positioned them to receive. Yes. That's what faith does. It positions us to receive what's already ours, right. what's Amen. already been made ours and what's available to us. Yes. We're, we're to occupy faith's position. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, and we, we made this statement yesterday. Jesus went everywhere teaching, mm -hmm. preaching, and healing. Mm -hmm. Notice the divine order. Yes. He didn't say he went everywhere healing, mm -hmm. teaching, and preaching. He went everywhere teaching preaching and healing, yes. which is in line with what we read here in Luke 5, 15, mm -hmm. that they came to hear. What did they come to hear? Teaching. Yes. Yes. They came to be taught. Yes. To right. receive from God, you have to be willing to listen. Yes. Right. You have yes. to be a student. Yes. You have yes. to be a, a hearer. Yes. Um, right. You have to position yourself because you know that he knows more than you. He knows more than me, right? He knows more. So we're positioning ourselves under the teaching of the word. That is going to help us hold fast so that the devil can't steal from us the healing we've already, we've already received. Amen. Amen. Um, I made this statement, teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching of the word, preaching of the word should arrive us at healing. It points to. It should point to the healing that belongs to us. If, we, if people will not listen to the teaching, will not listen to the preaching, let's say this, they don't honor the teaching. They don't honor the preaching of the word. They don't give it a place of value in their life. It's going to be difficult for them to receive healing because they won't be in position that teaching and preaching of the word puts them. Amen. They won't be in a position of faith like they ought to. And that faith only comes through the, through hearing the word, right. hearing That's it taught, right. hearing it preached. Yes. So no wonder Jesus went everywhere teaching, mm -hmm. preaching, and healing. If he was going to get their healing to them, he had to get the teaching That's in them. Right. Amen. Amen. So no matter if you received healing through someone else's faith, you're still going to have to have your own faith to hold fast to it. That's right. Amen. There are situations and times when the Spirit of God may move with the gift of, gifts of healing. Mm -hmm. 
and someone may be healed apart from their own faith. It was a gift of healing. But anything that you receive through a gift of healing or somebody else prayed Mm -hmm. and their faith operated in your behalf, that help is temporary. Now listen to me. Mm -hmm. That help is temporary. Why? Because the devil's going to come challenge and see if you believe. He's trying to steal from you everything God has ever blessed you with. So through that period of time, once you receive your healing, with the, if, if you received it with the help of someone else's faith or through a gift of the Spirit, take the time and say, I'm going to have to feed my faith so that this isn't stolen from me. Because I've got to learn to hold fast. Why? Fight the good fight of faith. Paul wouldn't tell us to fight the good fight of faith if there wasn't something going to oppose that faith. So we have to not assume that if I've received it, I'll always have it. In God's definition, yes, it's always yours. Mm -hmm. Healing is always yours. It always belongs to you. You, We're not having to hold fast to it in the face of God, but in the face of opposition, in the face of the enemy, in the face of the thief who tries to steal, kill, and destroy from us. So uh, Jesus, if he could not get the teaching and the preaching in the people, uh, they weren't positioned to receive healing. And we looked at uh, in Mark 6 in the previous episode how Jesus went to his own hometown, but they wouldn't receive the teaching. They wouldn't receive the preaching. So it says there he could do their no mighty work. And uh, it says, and he marveled because of their unbelief. That's not a good marveling. (laughs) They marveled because of their unbelief. And then he didn't want to leave them in that situation of not hearing. That he didn't want to leave them in in the position of not believing. So what did it do? The next phrase said that what he did, he went round about the villages teaching. Thank God for the teaching of the word. Until we're taught, we don't know what belongs to us. Until we're taught, we don't know what the price that Jesus paid. Until we're taught, we don't know that we are the healed. Because your body won't teach you you're the healed. You have to be taught from God's word that you're the healed. I love when my son said, he said, healing is not a feeling. It's a truth. It is a a truth. And it's our place in Christ and it's our position in Christ. So we don't, we're not led by our feelings. That's the good thing. Faith doesn't walk by what it sees, by what it feels. Why? Because faith is not a feeling. Don't misunderstand me. Once you receive your healing and the manifestation of it, you'll feel it. But I'm just saying, we don't believe that we're healed because of feelings. We believe we're healed because of the word, because God said it. God said it. God said it. Amen. Amen. So uh, we have to keep in proper order what the Word sets in order, teaching, Mm -hmm. preaching, and healing. Don't value healing more than you value the teaching of the Word. Um, The best way we hold uh, miracle crusades on the road, we hold conferences, of course, in our own church services. People will come um, and they need healing. Or they say, people will say, I'm going to bring a family member to be prayed for, for healing. They need healing. And what I always say, get them as many services as you can. Get them under the teaching and the preaching of the word. Because if you're just looking to bring them the last night when I lay hands on the sick, but they have no teaching and no preaching, the devil steal from them. He'll rob from them. So we've got to get the teaching of the word, the preaching of the word in people so they can hold fast to everything they receive from God. Amen. Amen. Um, Notice this. When we see Jesus in the synagogues, in the temple, it said he was teaching. Mm -hmm. Why? The church needs teaching. I'm not devaluing preaching. Absolutely. We need preaching. Preaching is declaring, but teaching is breaking it down little by little to help. It it puts handles on something. If I could say this, if this was a hot cup, I need that handle to be able to hold it. And if I want to pass this successfully to someone, there's less chance of mistake of dropping it if they grab the handle, yes, that's right. you see. Amen. So it's the same thing. That's what teaching does. It puts handles on truths yes. so Amen. that you can, 
you can say, I grabbed that. Yeah. I understood that. My heart understood that. Thank God for preaching because it, announce and it announces and declares what's ours. And man, we need to be stirred up and kept stirred up. And that's what preaching does. But Jesus was in the synagogue's teaching. Teaching. We need it all. That's what I'm saying. We need it all. So we must, we must place value on being taught the word because yes, if people yes. don't know the word, mm -hmm. listen to this, when people don't know the word, the devil can easily overthrow them. Right. Amen. Easily overthrow them. Mm -hmm. Continue to learn even after you've received healing because this is what we're teaching on how to keep your healing. Even after you've received healing, keep hearing the word if you want to hold fast to that healing. Right, yes. We can't be mindless toward the word, dismissive toward the word. We have to continue to hear the word so we can continue being doers of that word. Right. Being a doer of the word is when pain and symptoms show up. You say, no, you don't. You resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Don't wait for him to appear to be like some cartoon image before you. Uh, symptoms are him. Right. Yeah. Showing up, manifesting. Mm -hmm. Amen. It doesn't matter the form he shows up. Anything that comes from his kingdom, resist it. Right. Amen. 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 Continue to learn the word so that we can keep being doers of that word and keep the door closed to the devil so he cannot steal from us what God's blessed us with. Right. What's this mean? We're going to have to gain knowledge of the word. We cannot value the seat of ignorance. Right. Yes. Right. So, Amen. Amen. The seat of ignorance is easy to occupy, but hard to live with. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, being ignorant. I'm not, when I talk about being ignorant, that doesn't mean incapable of learning. It means not putting yourselves in a position to go further than what we already know. We should always be... Uh, Asking, seeking, knocking, studying. This is why Paul said, told Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God and unto man. You have to study. We can't just be floaters in our spiritual development and in life and say that we're going to easily hold fast. Holding fast will be a struggle and a difficulty if we're just floating in our spiritual life. We have to, on purpose, make ourselves students, put ourselves under, under sound Bible teaching. Amen. Uh, when we're ignorant, yes. we don't know. Don't be okay with not knowing. I, I so love what one woman said. This woman was given a terminal diagnosis years ago and she came to a healing school and she told those that were ministering at the healing school, she was born again, but she, she didn't know about healing. And she says, I decided I was not going to die prematurely just because I was ignorant of what the word said. <laughs> so she picked up and moved to that city just to sit under that healing, in that healing school so she could hear why she valued knowledge. Yes. And don't, don't be passive when you realize I don't have knowledge that I need to be successful, then go get it. Get it. You know, people value education, academic edu education, which there's a place for that, absolutely. Um, but you can't, you can't grow and gain academically just sitting at home being, hope somebody teaches me. That's true. Amen. We, people have a plan when they, it comes to their education, right? Yes. When it comes to their academics, parents have a plan for their children. They, every day they get up and they have a plan. They get them to school and they have homework. Why is that? They're, they're on purpose going into more. Yes. It's the same thing spiritually. On purpose, go into more knowledge. Gain knowledge of the Word. Many Christians have lost their healing due to one thing. Lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge regarding what God's, God's word said about uh, healing and about how to hold fast. I don't want ignorance to steal from me. Amen. Now, Amen. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But just because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy doesn't mean he has to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. Amen. He can come to do it, but he's not doing it. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. You may show up, devil, for that, but you're not doing it here. Yes. What stops him? Knowledge of the word acted on. Yes. 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 Knowledge acted on. You can't stop him from coming, but you can still stop. You can certainly stop him from accomplishing what he came for. That's right. Amen. Amen. So if we lose something to him, it's not because of him. It's because we lacked knowledge. We yeah. need it. 
Amen. we lack the knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Um, God warns us. He says, my people, mm-hmm. not the devil's people, mm-hmm. my people are destroyed yeah. for lack of knowledge. Yeah. Notice the devil's not mentioned. Right. When you have knowledge, the devil can't do what he does to others. Right. Knowledge makes the difference, but it has to be knowledge acted on. Right. And it has to be correct knowledge. Right. Correct right. knowledge. The devil takes advantage of people's lack of knowledge and, and is able to hold them in a place of defeat when they're ignorant. Mm-hmm. Run mm-hmm. ignorance out. How do you do that? Through teaching and preaching of the word. Yes. You run ignorance mm-hmm. out. No wonder Jesus went everywhere teaching. Yeah preaching and healing. What's he doing? He's going everywhere, running out ignorance, running out ignorance, running out ignorance. Why? Because ignorance is their enemy. Amen. Amen. As we learn God's word, we believe on it. We act on it. Ignorance cannot live with us. Um, There was one minister that he had a, he had a sister that was diagnosed with terminal cancer. He prayed for her. He believed God for her. She was a Christian, but she had never developed spiritually. And um, so she received divine healing. She completely recovered. The doctors said, clean bill of health, no cancer. About five years later, another form of cancer, totally unrelated, came on her. And this same minister went back to God and uh, to believe God again for her. And God says, nope. He said, uh, it's not go- your, your faith isn't going to be able to help her this time. Mm-hmm. And he, th- listen to what God said. He said, she's had five years mm-hmm. since her healing yeah. Yeah. Right. that y- you mm-hmm. were able with your faith mm-hmm. to help her receive her healing. Mm-hmm. And he said, in the last five years, she's done nothing toward her spiritual development. She has not fed on the word. Mm -hmm. God said she could have had any of your teaching materials, your books, your uh, audio teachings. She could have had any of them for free. You'd have given to her for free. Mm -hmm. And she never made any attempt to educate herself spiritually. Mm -hmm. And he said, so now the devil has no problem overthrowing her. What was that? This is Hosea 4, 6 that we're warned about. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So once we receive our healing, that is not an invitation to become passive. That is not the time to, Mm -hmm. and and listen, I'm not talking about fearfully, I've got to get the, no, just know this. You're going to have to know something to to hold fast to what you received. You have to know the word. And that's your place of safety is knowledge. When you know something, Things don't, don't frighten you that would frighten others. Yeah, Things right. don't trouble you that would trouble that's others. Right. There's a safety in knowing what the Word says. Yeah, so the devil takes advantage of people who don't know something. Mm-hmm. So occupy the seat of the learned. Yes. Don't occupy and value the seat of the ignorant. Right. Amen. 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 And it's not up to others to prompt you yeah. toward right. your spiritual yeah. development. Right. It is within our sole responsibility. Yes. And then God gives us help. He gives us pastors that help us in that process, but it's up to us to take charge of our life. If I could say this for us to put a whip in our own hand against our, toward our own life and say, get up, get to church, be a blessing, learn the word. Amen. You have to, you have to take initiative toward your own spiritual development. And when you do, the power of God will uh, escort you into great things. Amen. So many believers falsely think that once they receive their healing, there's nothing left to do. Uh, But the Bible warns us that we have to do something afterwards. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us, hold fast that which is good. Now see, he's talking about something good. Don't you say healing's good? Healing's good, right? Peace is good. Joy is good. All these things are good, but notice what, when you have something good, you have to hold fast to it. Not in the face of God. God's, you don't have to convince God of anything, but in the face of your enemy. You're not stealing mine from me. Amen. 
Revelations chapter 3, verse 11 says, Hold fast, uh, hold that fast which thou hast. Yes. Notice you got it, yeah. yes. but notice you're going to have to hold fast to it. Um, these instructions let us know something's going to come to try to take from us what we've received or else we wouldn't need to hold fast. There's going to be challenge to it. There's an enemy arrayed against us who wants to steal it. And of course, James 4 verse 7 tells us resist the devil. So when that shows up, that opposition shows up, we resist the devil. Not God resists the devil. We, we are the understood subject here. Resist the devil. And he will flee. He will flee. Uh, you don't have to just go through life saying, I, uh, if I could say this, symptoms show up, I resist you, I resist you, devil. You must flee, you must flee. You don't have to keep saying it over and over. I resist you and you flee now. There you go. There you go. Amen. Amen. Believe, yes. believe that yes. when you resist him, he flees regardless of what you feel, right. regardless of what circumstances yes. show you. This is part of your skill in holding fast. Yes. And we all have to develop this skill That's of right. holding fast. Many times the believers aren't missing it in the area of faith, mm -hmm. believing that healing belongs to them, yes. but they're missing it in the area of resisting as they should. Amen. Amen. What we don't resist has permission to stay. So make sure that you, at every turn, you're resisting what should not be there. Amen. Amen. Well, we've got more to, sh to share and teach on this, and we all need it. I said we all need it. You don't want to miss next time. Go back and we'll even watch previous episodes. But until then, remember this. Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.